Hi all and welcome to yet another uh hey a rapid game? Yeah. It's funny because a Finn Good You just accepted my uh challenge, but then he aborted the game and now he's back. So we can play again. Okay. Well wishing you a good game there, Finn Good You. Let's see, here we go. So it's a, it's a London setup against the King's Indian, right? This is quite typical play. So I normally play h3 once they cover the e5 square. Um, yeah, let's go here. Let's try and finish development, I guess. Okay, I'll have to take this very seriously. Yeah, he's a strong player and I hate these systems, these c7, c5 systems. I just don't know so well how to play those. And it always goes like this. I always put my pawn on c3 and... Yeah. But maybe there's this idea, you know, that's normally employed by my good Austrian chess friend from Vienna. And he tries to play a4 and b4 in these structures. So maybe I can do something similar. Also, quite often they just drop back the bishop. Um, but let me just start with this a4 business, yeah? Okay, black has a very solid, strong structure, and now he wants to go e5. Yeah, okay, so he's going to hit my bishop. Let me just retreat the bishop all the way to h2. Yeah, that's a prophylactic move. He is controlling e5 one, two, three times. I'm also controlling it one, two, three times. If he plays e7, e5, he's normally weakening d6. Aha, okay, so how to recapture? How to recapture, huh? This is a good move, I feel. I feel that this is a good move. Now I want to recapture with a pawn. Maybe with my e-pawn. I'm normally speaking into the e-pawn. But then he will have um, a pawn majority in the center. What did the yeah? It's difficult. I find it difficult to figure out what the best plan here is. We might also just play on the on the queen side. Eh? There will be an open c file if I recapture that with the c pawn. So should I be thinking about this uh, for long or not? Let's just take that with the C pawn. Somehow looks interesting. Cannot really be a mistake, right? Okay. It feels it's time for queen b3 now. If he plays bishop c4 to hit me, then I have uh, bishop d5, I mean, then I have. Then I have bishop. A c4. If he takes it, I can just take with the queen or with the knight. Uh, it all looks fine, I think. Um, otherwise, queen b3 is putting some pressure on f7. That's also quite nice. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with that. 
Okay, it looks to be safe, right? Yeah, it's safe. Okay, here we go. This is a good move. I might also be threatening, quote unquote, um, a5 now, because he didn't do anything to stop a5. The normal reaction there would be to go a7, a6, and then once white goes a4, a5, you can play b6, b5. You know, knight e5 might actually be a threat here. Because if he plays e6, I can take on d6, maybe? Yeah. Okay. Well. Well, one of the ideas I had earlier was to play knight c4, you know, to hit d6. Quite nice. <laughs> Quite nice. Yeah, I might also just take on e5. Okay, guys, what I'm looking at is an attack against f7, right? Um, I might play that attack right now. And there is also knight c4. So this move feels really fishy somehow. What's the strongest try? Huh? If I play knight c4, there's always this bishop. And bishop d5, so somehow that doesn't look too promising. If I play bishop c4 immediately, there is d5. But then I go bishop b5. So that's also nice. I can just try that, huh? That also looks very decent. So I can go bishop c4, then I'm hitting f7. I'm expecting him to go rook f8 really, or if he goes d5, I'll go bishop b5, and then I'm really quite strongly controlling all those uh, light squares. I don't know if that will bring me anything to be honest. Yeah, so to sidestep d6, d5, I could take on e5. That was the other idea. Let me take on e5. And I'm uh, guessing he will take that with the pawn. And then bishop, uh, bishop c4 looks uh, strong. It would be awkward for him to go rook e7, so probably rook f8. And then maybe I can continue um, with knight g5 or rook d1. Those moves all look strong, but there is, in these circumstances, there is always knight c5 hitting my queen. Okay, so that feels a little bit awkward. So maybe we should try and keep a pawn then on d4 after all. So I'm, I'm going to try and play, yeah, I don't know, I don't know, bishop c4, rook f8, or d5 there. Okay, so once more, bishop c4, d5, bishop b5, e4. Well, it, it does look very active for me, so let, let's just go with that. So bishop c4, let's try bishop c4. I'm 
Unfortunately, after d5, I cannot go d takes e5 because d takes c4 hits my queen. Yeah, but you know, um, all of this makes both his bishops look worse than mine, and I will have some play along the c file and the London diagonal. So, this is basically why I'm <clears throat> trying to play like this, but it takes me what was it, three, maybe four minutes to go like this? Yeah. Okay, so the idea now was to go here. So let's do that, yeah? Yeah, and now we'll just probably... Uh, where do we go? I think we jump in, right? The only logical move is basically to jump in. <coughs> But now knight d2, what's knight d2 going to do? It's not clear what my knight's going to do. Maybe my knight should be rerouted to c3. Should put some stuff on the c-file. I'm guessing maybe he will... Now, can he play b6? I take on d7. He should take that with the knight. Yeah, then I take with the knight. He takes it with the queen. And then I take on b6. That is a pawn. So he unpins. He unpins. Okay. Well, I'm not sure. He unpins. I think it's time to put something on the C file now, guys. Or could we put... Yeah, we could also start putting something on C6 then. That would give us an extra opportunity. Uh, am I afraid of a knight takes E5? No, I'll just probably take that... With the bishop, I could. Um, let's use this one. Maybe I use the other one on the A file. You never know where you might want to use it. Normally, I like to keep my rooks on the F file and just keep F2 protected. This might give my knight an extra square on F1. Not that it's tremendous because it's not active over there. It also gives my bishop a square on e2 and or f1. I might still work with a4, a5, yeah, so that's nice that I keep my rook on the a file because bishop b7 is weak, right? So what's going on? I'm hitting d7 twice, but he's protecting it one to three times. c7 is a vulnerable square under circumstances. Yeah, I think you should just take that with the bishop. If I take that with the pawn, well, there's also the in-between rook c8, of course, but I don't really see what that gives me. Or maybe I should look better than if I don't see what it gives me instead of playing fast. So now uh, he still cannot double on the c file because my bishop is there, so I'm guessing maybe he wants to Question my bishop with knight d7 maybe. But then I think I'll just drop it back to g3. Um, knight h5, same idea. Bishop h2. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, he may want to go... So, he may want to go to d6 and then c4, but if I keep control of c4, which I'm doing currently 1, 2, 3, 4 times, then I think that's fine. I want to keep that bishop there, uh, but there's also rook c8 stuff going on. But I might play that if he puts his knight on d6, yeah? Okay, let's play a little bit faster. I don't see any immediate trickery for winter material with bishop e8 or rook c8. Also, sometimes maybe bishop h4 would be embarrassing. I'm 
another idea, another plan here is queen a3, knight b3. But then again, weren't we going to put the knight on c3? C3, but I cannot really do that now. Haha, uh -huh, because I chose the F rook. Pity, pity, eh? Pity, yeah. I think I have some pressure on this position, but I don't think it's a big deal. What is good for him is that his rook on e7 is protecting the bishop on b7, so that's not really a target at the moment. So where are my targets? I can hit the queen in one go with bishop c7, but that's a little bit weird. Um, I can hit this bishop sometimes with bishop h4, bishop d6. Um, this seems to be a target. Um, this one not yet, but could be a little later on. But I don't think I'm really better. I'm just not really better. Yeah. Okay, well now he makes things easy for me. Because now if I want to, I can always just go knight b1 c3 for instance, or a3 or whatever. Yeah. Um. Well, bishop d6 is, of course, a little bit silly. <coughs> I could retreat the bishop and then um, start with probing moves, such as queen b4. There's also queen b4 immediately, but do I want to give that bishop? There's also bishop h4, which is nice. Bishop h4 sort of forces f6, and then uh, then d5 becomes all the more weak. That's that's an enjoyable position to play. F6 is not very nice for him. I might follow it up even with um, with bishop c6. Okay, that just looks pretty darn good. The rook also cannot really move to c7, for instance, because I take the queen, and if he takes on c1, I'm not mated because I have the h2 square. Now it looks very attractive to um, to attack the defender of d5. It is his bad bishop, I know that, but bishop c6 looks looks very attractive. So I think I'm going to play that. There's not really a problem, right? Bishop c6, bishop c6, rook c6. And um, then he has to move the knight. To f5, but then I take... That's also quite nice. Then I take on, on f6. But I need to do some proper calculation there. Well, it, it just looks too interesting not to play. I'm just hoping that it's not really a mistake somehow. If he takes my bishop, then I have to recapture like this. But I also might be dominating a little bit on the C file then. Yeah.
But still, I don't see how I can really involve my knight. So maybe this whole plan is a little bit too shallow again. Not really playing. Other plans were, of course, to, to drop back with the bishop and play for dark squares with queen a3 or b4. But this one looks attractive. Looks attractive, yeah. Okay, but now I think he's making a mistake. Um, oh, no, no, he's not. I was the one making a mistake here. Okay, I thought now I can take on b7. Then d5 is hanging. Hmm, okay, but clearly it didn't really pan out the way I had hoped. Okay, here we go. Take the stakes. And now I want to take on e4, but it just doesn't work, right? Because he just picks up that beautiful piece. Oh, that's really a pity. So let's just go here. But now the threat is knight e4. Yeah, bishop h6 is not yet a threat. But there are some opportunities here. There are some opportunities. But this, no, this backfired. That's a pity. I didn't see that he could start with knight f5. Uh -uh. Well, it just hits your targets, so you should have calculated better there. Yeah, again, I'm trying to make the play, but the play will not really work, huh? Um, I think I should try and find salvation on the C file. So if he plays, let's say, F5 to protect, then I should go for an immediate Queen C2 or Queen C3 to put it on c8 because then I will dominate the c-file uh, the b3 square will be there for my knight and my king can attack g3 and e3 also knight f1 huh? knight f1 is a very important option for me knight f1 And, well, I do have the initiative still, quote-unquote, because I'm threatening knight e4. That looks like a good move, but maybe he can even allow that. Maybe he can allow that even, yeah. Maybe I don't even want that pawn anymore. Yeah. And maybe I just want the c-file. Can you go rook c7, we exchange, and I go knight e4 check anyway. I'm not check, knight takes e4, then he has a check on the back rank, but I'm quite safe on h2, it would appear. Um, yeah. Now I think I will have to go for it. Looks like I will have to go for it now. If I go for the C file right now, then I'm not really threatening it. Because he can always take there on E3. If I go Knight F1, he'll just go Rook C7. So I'll just have to play this and hope, yeah. This is a strange way of elimination because this may just be a blunder. And of course, he took a very close look at this move. Um, he cannot go Rook E7 because of a Knight F6 check.
And then I have knight g4, for instance, which is very nice. He can also not hit the knight with the queen on the e file, because then it's queen d5 check, probably winning. And what's my next move going to be? Is it knight c3? No, I don't think that was possible. Because then I have this check. Um, seriously? Seriously? Um, I wanted to go here. And that just... Well, that just seems to hit everything and open up everything. So, hmm, am I just playing more precisely, tactically speaking here? My opponent left the game. He didn't see this. You can claim victory in 68, 67 seconds. Well, maybe he disconnected. That is possible that he disconnected. Finn Goodhue. Well, let's just see what happens. Maybe this is also some sort of online idea. Just to make your opponent think that you're left. But I... Well, there is, there's Rook F1 check, of course, in the position. I also somehow want to try and play E4. But that just hangs everything. Rook E4 or Bishop takes E4. If um, he goes there, there's also knight e5 check, a knight e5, knight e5 is a good square, but again he can go, he can go bishop g7, okay, well does he return? If he goes, yeah. Okay, claim victory. Well, that's a pity. It strikes me also a little bit as unsporting. It says here, warning Finn Goodhue, leaving games without resigning will result in a temporary ban. Well, I won this game. Okay, I can be happy about it. Let's analyze a little bit because I was not too happy with my combination here. Um, let's let's take it from the beginning. Yes, let's take it from the beginning. Computer analysis is already running. This is all perfectly normal stuff. Yeah, this is all very well known up until here. Let's ask uh, the masters how they normally play. Um, a four is the top move there. I played that, and then rook e eight. Is not a top move, seems to score quite well. Bishop h2 is the top move from the masters at least. It's not a top move from the computer. If you play a4, why would you not play a5? Well, for the moment that could be taken and uh, the b pawn is not yet pinned, so you could also start with queen b3. But I still uh, like my bishop h2, it's fine. Now he takes here. And the decision for me was was really difficult. Uh, normally a London system player tries to recapture with the e-pawn. Uh, but then somehow he would have the majority. What is this? What is this move? Did I completely... Yeah, there's this knight c4 always. Yeah, it's knight c4. Knight c4. Let's just go with his knight c4. It's interesting. He's also not really threatening anything. Well, maybe e5, e4. Then the knight could jump to, um, to e1, he suggests. Well, the idea that intrigues me is, is knight c4. Because um, I'm hitting, you know, stuff so many times. How could he defend that? Well, if he takes on d4, it's knight d6 immediately hitting stuff. If he moves the knight, I can take on e5. I should be more brave. I should be more brave. 
um, he suggests knight e4 is the better try because it brings in uh, a defender of e5 and d6 so it's a double defense basically but then on the other hand it's also a little bit um, cramped I want to say I'm not so sure about this move because if he if he now plays this oh you have to counter attack yeah you have to counter attack it's really starting to look pretty good yeah yeah it's really starting to look pretty good so this c4 idea is really important so e5 is something not something to be afraid of really yeah and if he plays this try well, again, there is just, you know, d6 becoming very, very weak. I cannot take there yet because he will take in between on f3. Um, but there might be a double hit, knight f to d2 or knight e1. Yeah, something like this. Let's say something like this. And then there is still this, but of course, and, and the knight jumps into d6. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's also something to remember, this particular uh, position. So he took here, and, and I decided to take with the C pawn, but maybe that does not really leave sufficient imbalances in the position. Well, now he says it's plus zero five. Okay, rook C eight, queen B three. Yeah, he likes E five. This move did feel a bit fishy. But my bishop c4 reaction was not the best. My bishop c4 reaction was apparently not the best. Um, yeah, knight c4 I also briefly considered, but I was a little bit afraid of bishop d5. Bishop d5 is suggested, yeah. Yeah, I'm just putting myself in a pin. It's a bit awkward, right? He suggests just move a rook to the c-file or play a5. Um, yeah, play a5. That makes perfect sense, I suppose. It's difficult, yeah, to, to figure out. Should you now, uh, if you go back one more, should you go for this one? Should you go for this one? Should you go for this one? There's so many opportunities here. But I might just play with my rooks here. This, in a way, also plays with the rook, because the rook is behind it on the a-file. Um, yeah, I was never really afraid of bishop d5, because I just wanted to interpose this one. Mm. This is quite quite a nice position, I think. Yeah, this is all so playable. And then there is rook f or a to c1. I went with bishop here, not so strong. Um, and the defense chosen was this, but it turned out that it was not so horrible for black. It was actually quite all right. Yeah, um, of course there's e4. Maybe we slightly prefer takes on d4, because then black pieces have more space. Huh? Yeah, so he played this. This was maybe not such a good try. I mean, if you go here, and I just want to play against the isolated... Uh, pawn position, then uh, there are much more opportunities for black pieces, and I don't think he should be worse here. It looks all really quite quite solid. So I think I should have realized that as well. E4, knight e5, I may have a tiny little something. I was expecting him just to go knight e5, but rook e7 also seems fine. Yeah, so now he suggests to take on d7 so that I don't have to lose time when after bishop takes e5 he hits that bishop again as he did in the, in the game. So bishop d7 he's suggesting and then you should of course recapture with the knight. That knight is not ideal and now just put something on the c file and take it from there. Okay, I put something in the c file immediately. He took here. Um, he said, well... Yeah, I didn't really want to give up. No, I don't like rook c8. So let me just play this normal move, and now he played this. Uh, bishop g3 is what I played in the game, he also likes that. So the intuition is not too bad. 
Then there's Rook C1, what he played. Rook C1. Yeah, that, that gives up that C file also a little bit voluntarily, right? I mean, if he doesn't do that, but he plays something else, like, <laughs> like this move immediately. I cannot take the C file because C1 is not sufficiently protected. Okay, yeah, in, in this case I can take on C8 because he cannot recapture with the queen. Yeah, so maybe this is not the best try. Rook E6 is also a bit of a difficult move. And, and briefly I saw the computer suggest this move. Um, why does he insist on taking... Um, well, now he says I can just take there. And now a5. Yeah, play continues, but I don't like my weakened back rank. So if anything, I would just suggest this, but now he can maybe win. Mm, yeah. Maybe he can win the pawn here, I'd have to take. And b7 is protected, yeah? So that's important. If I play bishop takes e8, he can take that with the queen, and the bishop is still protected. But he says you have some sort of positional dominance here. You can just take it from there. Hmm. Well, okay, these margins are all very, very subtle. Let's just go with the game where after bishop g3 he initiated the exchange, c1, c1, and now knight d6. Bishop h4 he likes, yeah, f6 is basically the only move. Yeah, okay, and bishop c6 was just a calculation mistake. Calculation mistake. <laughs> but otherwise he suggests just to go back with the bishop. Say the bishop has done its work, it's lured the pawn forward, pawns cannot really go back. So that's uh, that's clearly an improvement. Hmm. Yeah, I, I can understand that also. Bishop c6 was nice, but maybe I was, um, what's the word, enticed too much into playing something that is nice. I didn't pay sufficient attention again to um, the best defense, which as so often is the counterattack. Um, it does seem to be the only try here, because what I was looking at was this, but then my rook will be functioning along the, the sixth rank there. And now I saw that I could take on f6, and that just seems to be good. Especially since, of course, there is no horrible uh, discovered attack here with the rook. I mean, if my queen were on the c-file, then a rook c7 would sort of win. Um, yeah, and, and there is still this problem with knight e4, so the rook cannot even move away from the e-file. So I was trusting this line, but if he starts with this, that's really beautiful, that's really beautiful. Well, I still took him b7, the position seems to be equal, he has to go here, I have to go here, he takes, I have to go here, and now bishop h6 was wrong. Yeah, it does allow me to take, yeah? So I was thinking he just have, has to play this, and then I'll just uh, play him on the c-file. I'll just play him on the c-file. So one idea was to go, let's say here, and then go for... Uh, Something like, I'm still dominating the c-file, so I can also just maybe strengthen the position first. Uh, but the basic idea was to play like this, but now he says, nah, I'm not so sure, I'm not so sure. Maybe because my rook will be kicked out sooner or later, and my king is not sufficiently close to the c-file. So this would be putting my my head in a noose. Of course he has a great bishop, you know, and I have horrible weaknesses, so if he doesn't do anything, where am I going to hurt him? Maybe in the long term he can only hurt me, so that was also a bit of a misjudgment, that this endgame would be fine for me. Well, maybe it still is, but maybe black is the only one who can win. Okay, this is just a tactical oversight. Maybe he was missing this pin along the Italian diagonal all along, and now he just, yeah, he just allowed me this. Um, knight d5 as well. Why did I play so quickly knight d4? Because I had seen that idea earlier. Knight d5, come on, Waldemar. This is just this is just a blunder. Sorry, this is just a blunder. This is just a blunder. I was too excited there. 
Incredible. Okay, well, I think that ends the game, and that gives me a score of 1 1 1. Meh, it's a pity, bishop c6. I should have retreated there with a bishop. Yeah, that's what I learned. And of course, this move with horrible discovered attacks because he also has to move the, the rook here. Incredible. And that with, with a rating of plus 2100. <laughs> you don't see these moves, yeah? Okay, so that, that was it. Review black mistakes. Well, I think the mistakes um, were clear there. So, uh, SLC, please subscribe, like, and comment on YouTube. See you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.